Fala aí galerinha, belezeira? Sejam bem-vindos ao canal, meu nome é Marcos Garcia e no vídeo de hoje vocês vão ter um bate-papo muito bacana. Eu tive o prazer imenso de poder conversar com o Marco, que é o criador do Kirigami, com o Tomás, que é o co-mantainer do console e também com o Patrick, que é o co-mantainer do Atelier e também do Kill Ground Control. A gente fez um hangout, ficou muito show de bola. O áudio, infelizmente, não ficou as mil maravilhas, tá ok? No comecinho do vídeo, principalmente, que tinha uns ruídos entrando ali em um dos microfones, mas depois esses ruídos acabaram sendo eliminados. De qualquer forma, dá para entender, tá? As legendas, o, áudio, o vídeo foi feito todo em inglês, porque o Marco não entende português, então foi tudo feito em inglês. O meu inglês ficou um pouquinho macarrônico, mas acho que também passa, dá para entender. Mas todas as legendas para todas as línguas que o pessoal aí contribuir e ajudar a fazer estarão no sistema de legendas do YouTube. Então é só você clicar ali e mandar ativar a legenda, tá ok? Que você vai poder acompanhar em português. Beleza? Então é isso. Simbora para o vídeo. Espero que vocês gostem. A gente falou bastante de Kirigami, falamos de Plasma Mobile, falamos também do ateliê. É, o que mais? Bom, tem bastante coisa bacana aí nesse vídeo, tá ok? Simbora pro vídeo, chega de ficar falando aqui na introdução. Vamos lá! First of all, Marco, it's a pleasure for me to have you here. It's a pleasure for me to have Tomás. Have you, Tomás, here too? And Patrick, to nice to meet you for this those two guys I I didn't know there those guys so nice to meet you welcome to my channel so okay. Kirigami is a KDE's lightweight user interface framework for mobile and conversion applications right so could you tell a little more about this technology and its relationship with Plasma Mobile? Okay, so uh, uh, and uh, a framework uh, that is useful for developers to learn and application. It's based uh, on top of uh, uh, and KD technologies. Um, is the uh, main uh, widget toolkit for uh, used uh, by Plasma Mobile as well, uh, but you can use it also on Plasma Desktop or on any um, Linux uh, desktop environment, as well on uh, Android and Windows and on Macintosh. It's um, built on top the QML technology uh, done, by, done by Qt, uh, on which extends it uh, with more high-level controls, uh, like a set of uh, Lego blocks uh, for uh, uh, building applications. It's also uh, not only a pure techno technological framework, but it's also a set of uh, of uh, interface guideline and uh, design concept uh, uh, the technological framework is uh, a way to easily implement uh, those um, guidelines Tomas I would like to say something Inside of KDE, we already have a lot of applications that are built on top of Kirigami so if people don't believe that Kirigami can be used for for real applications, uh, that is actually completely false because we already have those. So the system settings inside of KDE now is completely Kirigami. The Discover, the, the application starter is also Kirigami. And one of the first Kirigami users was actually outside of KDE. So Mark spent a few hours creating Kirigami. He was really fast creating it. And then Linux Torvalds adapted it. So Subsurface runs on Kirigami for Android and iOS. And I believe that this is something that is quite huge because you know that Linus is usually somebody that is quite vocal about things that he hates. Yes. And he never screamed against Kirigami. Oh, this is good. 
Beleza. E a little bit on Portuguese now. Cara, a gente já está funcionando no Android, no iOS, tem pelo menos uns dois anos. And this is something that the GTK people are still struggling to, to have. They still don't have a working application on mobile, for instance. So if you are targeting your application to anything, to Mac, Windows, uh, Linux, Android, iOS, or still unreleased ones, you can use Kirigami. Oh, okay. Patrick, do you would like to say something? Uh, so uh, I started to use Kirigami with a, a test interface for Atelier. For the ones that do not know, Atelier project is a project to use uh, KDE technology to use 3D printers. And right now we are working to control CNC as well. Uh, the idea is to use Kirigami is to allow the control of the 3D, inter 3D printers via cell phones, tablets, and desktops with the same base code. Uh, and I think that's the most important part because you don't need a huge team to, to make everything compatible with uh, Android, iOS, Windows, Linux, and Mac. Uh, you can use the same code base, uh, code base to work with everything. Uh, and the main idea also was to, to be able to use low-cost computers as old cell phones or old single-board computers to control the 3D printers. Uh, and Kirigami shows that it is totally possible to, to, to run the API or to run the control of the 3D printers without a huge uh, usage of the processor and being able to, to use it without any problems in low hardware or low end hardware. So I, I just example, I, I, I created a small fast graphic interface and I was able to use uh, a 3D viewer with, I don't know, 10,000 uh, 10, uh, points in a 3D object with 60 FPS in a low end cell phone because you, you can uh, watch and see the 3D object while it's printing by your cell phone. Uh, and that was uh, really good with the same uh, graphic interface working in desktop and cell phones. Uh, it, 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 to me, it's like uh, the best use case to create uh, an application for everybody in any hardware. Oh, well, this is great, this is great. Uh, I, I, I just want to comment. I think that it's important for people to know. Uh, and you correct me if I'm wrong too, okay? Uh, Atelier started from in Brazil, it's right? Yeah, that's right. It started with uh, an old project called BR Print. Mm -hmm. uh, and after that, uh, after some problems with some developers, the project uh, was moved to KDE. We started with a new name called Atelier. And so we have the Atelier project. Uh, under the Atelier project, we have another one called AT Core. Uh, and everything started from Brazil with, uh, with uh, mainly Brazilian developers. And right now, we have uh, uh, mainly a developer in the United States. We have another test guys in Europe and around the globe. So the project is working fine. We have companies that are looking with good eyes are using the source base to provide new tools, to provide new products. And we are, we are having a lot of help from that. So it's, it's going really fine for us. Well, one thing that I would like to add on that is that there are already quite a few applications built on top of AT Core. So we just discovered that somebody used AT Core inside of his um, university project to control some kind of machine. So it is really nice to know that an application that is not mainstream has been picked up and it's been widely used. I really did not know that there is at least four applications already used. Uh, six or seven. Six or seven. Uh, that's even better. Seven. Because there are some companies that are using the code uh, in like Raspberries to control his 3D printers. And there is, uh, uh, as far as I know, I, I know three companies that are working at that. And there are more companies working in, uh, uh, in other projects. And as you said, in universities as well. And that is awesome. And that is also perhaps using a little bit of the interface that we created on Kirigami. 
And the project is not old, it's like only I think two years old right now. It's yeah. really young. Nice, congrats for the project. Thank you. What do I need to transform an existing application developed with Qt into a mobile friendly and conversion app? Okay, so um, uh, you need uh, uh, several things. It also depends on uh, how uh, the application was written. Um, the traditional Qt desktop application use uh, a technology called uh, uh, Q widgets, which uh, uh, sadly is not uh, uh, really compatible with, the, with this new uh, ML world. But um, if your application uh, uh, was uh, pretty well written and you did uh, a good uh, separation between the business logic of the, what the application actually does and um, just the GUI, the, the layout of widgets for it, then uh, it uh, uh, becomes not much, dif uh, not really difficult. Uh, for instance, if your application uh, uh, heavily relied on uh, uh, what are called models, um, that's the uh, way that uh, Qt uses to uh, represent uh, lists long lists of, of data, for instance, all the file in your file system for, for a file manager, and so on. Those work uh, in uh, QML and Kirigami as, as they are uh, with um, a very little modification, little to no modifications. Um, other things that are pre uh, pretty more heavily graphical they may need uh, uh, a bit more work, but uh, uh, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be that uh, that much work. Um, we had uh, uh, some examples already. Uh, we have uh, um, we, we we just we just uh, we just uh, uh, heard about about a couple of examples now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, the that is doing, is doing that now with their new Kirigami application, uh, Subsurface. Uh, also, that was born uh, uh, as a widget application. Well, it was actually born as a GTK application, but the uh -huh. story is interesting. Um, and also, uh, Conversation, which is a uh, uh, um, a KD client for uh, IRC um, is now uh, is now porting its uh, user interface to Kirigami without uh, uh, without touching pretty much nothing of its business logic, and in the process, it's also adding a, a support for Matrix. So uh, a good thing um, that's uh, in the process. Um, we also are now porting uh, uh, most of our system settings modules. So the uh, uh, system settings is the application that you use to uh, configure your Plasma desktop. It has many modules, uh, uh, what team to use, what fonts to use, uh, and so on. And we are porting one by one of those modules to um, QML and Kirigami, but also also there most most of the business logic that stays there pretty much untouched. I started porting uh, KCM settings from KD like two months ago. It should be like fifty lines of code, but I forgot to finish. I'm gonna try to finish this weekend. <laughs> Sorry. I will get back to you. Get back to you until you. I'm also gonna try to to improve the models. There is two things that people at my work ask us to do on the mouse KCM that we are missing, and that XFC has. So we need to be better than XFC. There is also one thing that I would like to talk about on the port in the subsurface to Kirigami, because there is one thing in subsurface that it's not ported because it would be too much trouble. Um, subsurface is heavily based on graphical data, so we have a ton of plots in there. Um, 
I really did not find anything to on how to draw those charts on Kirigami. There is a few, but I couldn't find. And they are the, the subsurface one. Oh, sorry, say more. Yeah, uh, we could probably build something nice, uh, maybe out of the new shapes uh, module for QML. Uh, mm -hmm. With that, you can you can you can uh, draw arbitrary splines uh, and things like that, uh, uh, which are done um, as uh, vertex shaders, so they are fast. Um, that is nice to know. I'm I'm gonna try to part, but when I when I wrote. There was, this didn't exist, so I had to do something uh, to use the graphical interface. Cute uh, 5.12, or it's, it's really recent. Yeah. Really, really recent. And I started this for subsurfacing Qt 5.5 or 5.4, so it's like really old. And I figured out that you can basically get a Q widget that it's ready for the desktop and do a little wrap around it and then use it. Even though it's a cute video for desktop, you can display that in a Kirigami interface. Mm -hmm. Of course, you lose quite a few things. So if you need mouse inputs or if you need um, keyboard control, that will be way more hard than what I did because I basically just exported the painting. And for that, it worked like a charm. So even okay. if you are stuck on desktop, you can still try to use the, the key widgets on KML, like I did. Yeah, you can, uh, as for a, as a porting aid, there is this thing that is called the Q-painted item uh, on which you can uh, recycle all your uh, uh, Q-painter custom painting code. It will not be super fast. If you, if you are not doing animations with it, it's fine. And, I am, and it's working. Yeah, and it, and it makes, uh, uh, it significantly helps uh, the porting process. Right, so uh, is there not any, an easy way to bring applications from other technologies like GTK to Kirigami without doing a very hard uh, implementation of the, the app? Well, that is not true because if the application is well defined from the beginning, the interface and the core logic will have different code paths. So mm -hmm. you, basically you just need to create yet another interface on top of the core. So yeah, you would need to rewrite everything from scratch, but just for the interface. And uh, Kirigami interface is really, really easy to write. It is mm -hmm. not a lot of lines of code should do basically nothing. So. If you want to do the to-do list, there is a really famous JavaScript application for demonstration purposes. One written in KML is less than 100 lines of code, a complete application. You know, like example about Atelier. Uh, Atelier uh, has already a graphic user interface uh, for desktops. And we started to write it to Kirigami some time ago. And it was really fast because, as Thomas said, the back end was already provided by AT Core. So to write the graphic user interface with Kirigami, we just need to, to recreate what already existed in another graphic user interface to Kirigami. It was uh, really fast because of the QML abstraction. Uh, and with a good uh, API, with a good core system like AT Core, uh, it was really easy to recreate the graphic user interface. It's a very nice use case to show people uh, that it's possible and it's not so complicated if the base of the application uh, it was well structured. So do you think it, it's important to have Kirigami in mind for a project that is starting today? So if I I am, I am a developer and I would like to start a new project with uh, KDE's technology. Should I start with Kirigami in mind, develop with this, this framework as default from my system? Uh, what, what's your opinion about that? Depends uh, also from the kind of application that you want to do. Uh, 
for most applications, uh, if you start uh, using the uh, you are uh, uh, you are uh, uh, getting a, a modern framework which uh, um, feature wide uh, um, can uh, can compare to um, uh, to other modern platforms could uh, could then from uh, uh, from Android or from Apple or from like the new Microsoft Fluent, they all have that one thing in common. Uh, all they all, all the drawing they do, it's um, it's uh, graphically accelerated, uh, which is uh, a thing that wasn't considered back then uh, uh, when the first versions of uh, Qt and GTK uh, were uh, were uh, designed because there wasn't hardware ready for that. Uh, but now that we do, uh, you can do just just simply a a, a better user experience um, with QML and Kirigami, and you will probably uh, want to be uh, multi platform as well. You will probably want to have uh, a mobile uh, version of the application uh, on which uh, uh, you have to use uh, QML at this point. Um, I would say that even if you're not targeting KD technologies, Kirigami is a good choice. And there is quite a few people that believe that they don't want to target something towards KD because there are just too many KD technologies involved and it's hard to should do something that it's completely KD. But you don't need to do that. Um, you can choose Kirigami and use just Kirigami from the KD frameworks and target your application just on top of that. And I work with Patrick in many softwares that are completely KML. I mean, the interface is 100% KML and the applications run in everything. Um, I would say, for instance, something that we me and Patrick discussed it today, the kill ground control. It does not use Kirigami, it created its own set of controls because it wanted to have a complete control of the look and feel. But if it ditched their controls that they created, um, their code base would shrink in half, I believe, because we already have a lot of things that they are using. And man, this kill ground control thing, it works anywhere. And it works fast. It works even faster than a uh, normal application created using just C++ technologies, like it is with Qt widgets, because Qt widgets are not video accelerated. I think it's one of the questions that I would <laughs> ask you, because today we, we do not have uh, any Linux distribution in a mobile-friendly way, right? We, I, I think Ubuntu phone is, it was uh, something near that, but today we do not have that and the other projects maybe will come from two or three years from now, but... Um, we do have Plasma Mobile, Plasma Mobile is already working, I mean, we no, no, no. do uh, have... I, I'm not mean in this way, I, I'm, I'm meaning in the way that Plasma Mobile are not, uh, is not cheap in by default in any phone today, right? We Today we have Android and iOS. Even Microsoft uh, <laughs> run away from this, this market. So what I, mean, what I mean is that Kirigami is very important to write applications that could be uh, running in those platforms without a problem, right? Because we do not have Linux in those phones and native Linux in those phones to run in Plasma Mobile or other uh, interface. Mm -hmm. um, this one, I don't know how to answer, do you know, Marco? Because I know that KD is working with a few companies, but I have no information about that. I know that Bushan is working with those. Uh, we, we are working on Plasma Mobile. Um, it's uh, at the moment not our uh, it's it's uh, not our central priority but what what we want to do is to have uh, um, a platform as robust as possible that uh, 
uh, runs on uh, on uh, several consumer phones on which uh, you can uh, uh, you can test your applications so if you if you write an application with kirigami uh, targeting android you know that without uh, with no code changes at all uh, you can compile it and test it on plasma mobile and as uh, as we will put more and more effort in plasma mobile then uh, we will get um, quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of applications from uh, uh, from day one um, basically all 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 the mobile applications done by the KD project uh, will be supported on Plasma Mobile. Uh, with Plasma Mobile right now, we want to uh, to use it most uh, mostly for uh, um, uh, tuning the performance of our workspace and our applications to uh, small uh, ARM platforms. Um, to see uh, what we are still missing of on um, on uh, touch enabled technologies and to uh, fix all of that and to uh, hopefully uh, have a product that will mature more and more uh, to the point that that at some point with with plasma mobile uh, together with Kirigami application, we will be confident to, uh, to say, try it as your phone, it works. It's not there yet, but it's getting there. And uh, if um, uh, more people join the project, it will get there a bit faster. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think the only big, big problem that we have today with phones to test the Plasma Mobile and Kirigami is that the manufacturers are shipping those phones more and more with the bootloader uh, locked. So here in Brazil, I do not know if we have a lot of options to uh, change the firmware and install the Plasma Mobile on our phones. Yeah, unfortunately, there are uh, there are producers of phones which are really not good citizens, like uh, the recent decision of Huawei to completely uh, lock down their bitloader, that, that was a bad one. Uh, there still are um, a manufacturer that allow to unlock the bootloader. Uh, there are some like Sony which uh, they are using this fact as a as an as an active promotional material. They kind of get some um, uh, some pride in the fact that uh, uh, their phones are kind of friendly to third parties operating systems. But I think uh, I think the this situation will probably improve. One thing that um, on all of those years uh, on um, on working with ARM devices uh, uh, that I seen uh, improving dramatically is uh, how much better uh, the Linux support um, for um, ARM SOCs has uh, as got. Um, there are several uh, uh, several SOCs like uh, All Winner, like uh, Rock Chip, uh, even, even some Snapdragons are very close to run uh, a, a pure, almost pure mainline kernel uh, without uh, third party patches. This is uh, happening slowly, but uh, compared to some years ago, uh, there the situation is already much better so um, a phone uh, using a uh, decently supported SOCs, SOC if uh, uh, the bootloader can be unlocked it's probably it's probably going to, uh, to run plasma mobile 
Oh, nice. Um, and also uh, some on some phones, you will have to still use um, Android dri uh, uh, drivers with the Helium project, uh, which uh, uh, wraps uh, Linux user space on top of uh, Android kernel, uh, Android uh, library, and Android drivers. Uh, other model are starting to directly support uh, real uh, Linux mainline, so you have an actual uh, Linux distribution installed on your phone without pieces of Android uh, that you left there. Patrick, uh, Tomas would like to say something. For that, I really don't know what to say because um, I've worked with Android, like on the, the Android source code, and even with Android, that it's prepared to go into many kind of firmwares, it was horrible to flash. So I can't imagine when what people working with the Plasma Mobile, like in the core team, are, are suffering. And I really appreciate that there are some companies that are backing us up and offering a bit of pleasantness by offering unlocked phones for us. And it's not so only a problem to flash the hardware, right? To put the operating system that you want. Uh, and it's also the, the hardware compatibility uh, that you need to provide for everything because it, this is this is a bit complicated. So the, the, if, you, if you look in cell phones, the hardware is completely different for each mobile cell phone, for each company, for each hardware, and for each enterprise that provides the hardware for this cell phone company. So different uh, of the computers that we know, the, the cell phone environment is a bit complicated for a unified operating system. But I would like very much to say that. There is the, is the SOC that is the, the one chip that has the, uh, the complete system and graphics drivers and the GSM uh, uh, radio on it. Uh, each one of those uh, system on chips is basically its own uh, complete environment. Sometimes even different models in the same company are significantly different, yeah. but even, even their situation is, is getting better. Uh, more and more hardware is getting supported. The, um, uh, those which uh, for the graphics use the um, uh, Mali uh, graphic chips are getting closer and closer to uh, an open source driver. Uh, the Lima driver is a uh, it's uh, still not ready for prime time, but getting really close to um, to be actually usable for draw, uh, for uh, driving a, a Wayland session. Marco, uh, for a, a person uh, that would like to start developing for KDE or with QT and QML and Kirigami technology, what more would you like to say for them? and uh, when they could start, if they want to contribute to the project or if they want to start using this technology to write their own applications? Uh, yeah, I would say uh, first, uh, uh, first thing, uh, um, come, talk with, uh, come talk with us. Uh, we have um, uh, many IRC channels. We are on Telegram as well. Uh, we are on Matrix as well. Uh, many channels are bridged uh, between uh, one or the other. Uh, for instance, uh, for Kirigami, um, on IRC, on Freenode, it's KDE-Kirigami, same channel on Matrix. There is also the um, Kirigami channel on Telegram. Um, on the KDE.org website, uh, there are lists of uh, uh, Telegram channels, IRC channels, mailing lists. Um, we are uh, uh, for internal development. We are using a lot, uh, a lot mailing lists. They are all uh, uh, listed in the on the KD website. Other IRC channels that can be useful are are uh, on free uh, all on free node, um, KD and KD dash Plasma Devel for uh, um, 
for the development of our main desktop. Um, as I said, uh, um, KDE dash Kirigami for uh, for Kirigami, uh, KDE dash VDG um, for um, our group of designers, on which if you are working on an application, you can uh, jump there and ask for um, um, ask for suggestion, ask for designs, and you have. Uh, 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 quite a lot of, of very good designers that um, can help you to make your application absolutely beautiful. Patrick, uh, Tomas would like to say something more. Uh, I think especially for the Brazilian people that would like to start writing application with Kirigami or uh, if they, they would like to contribute to the project. So, uh, uh, the first time that they got Kirigami, uh, to work on it, it was really simple uh, to run the examples, uh, to to create or to run the examples. Uh, uh, it, you just need to follow the readme. It's not a big deal at all, uh, and you can create the entire graphic interface in, in your desktop only <clears throat> using the display size that you want. So if you if you use the display size that you want in your know, tablet or your cell phone. You can try to simulate uh, the the look and feel of the, your graphic user interface with Kirigami because Kirigami will try to to work with these uh, small size available uh, in your screen theoretically. Uh, so you can resize the window to to try to take a look how the graphic user interface will work in desktop, cell phones, or tablets, and. You, to to be able to do that, you don't need to do a lot of things. Uh, it, it's just really simple. The examples will do that for you. You can take a look and see how it goes. Uh, and so, uh, as Marco said, there there is mail list, there is the RSC channel. Mm -hmm. uh, you can talk with everybody. Everybody is really accessible. Uh, there is no problem at all with uh, simple questions or really in uh, start, uh, questions that start development because the documentation need to be able to provide this kind of information if and if someone has this kind of question is because the documentation need to be uh, improved and i did some improvements in the Cree gaming documentation when i started so uh, that's a, a really good thing about uh, open source projects because you need you can improve not only the code, you can improve the documentation to help others to start to use Kirigami or to help others to to create just small programs to test it. And it is really simple. Uh, I think the, the only big issue is the two chain, two chain that you need to configure, like uh, the Android or iOS two chain. Uh, but this is this is a problem of the two chain. It's a problem of un how Android provides the two and how the iOS provides the twos. To, to make deployment for these uh, device, but the development in, in, in development with Kirigami is pretty easy, and uh, as I said before, it's pretty accessible to to ask for questions and to run the examples. I will try to answer in Portuguese because it is easier sometimes. A gente tem um monte de projetinhos feitos em Kirigami no Brasil e assim como o Patrick falou em inglês. As pessoas dos projetos são bem simples de serem aproximadas. Então, você tem o Sandro na Bahia, você tem o Patrick em Florianópolis, tem tem gente em São Paulo, tem eu aqui na Alemanha, mas sou baiano também, então serve. E se tiver dúvida de como começar, fala com a gente que a gente parou o que está fazendo para ajudar. Então, eu imagino que isso sempre seja uma coisa bem legal do projeto. E o projeto Cadê? O projeto Kirigami é absurdamente aberto a qualquer pessoa que queira participar com as pessoas sérias do projeto, com as pessoas antigas do projeto, parando o que estão fazendo para ajudar a começar. E só aproveitando a deixa aí, falando em português também, é, reforçando um pouco do que você está dizendo, eu acompanho alguns dos canais no Telegram, onde você participa e eu vejo que você está sempre solícito aí para resolver várias dúvidas e várias questões de vários usuários em relação ao Plasma Desktop. Acho que é bom reforçar isso daí, porque... De fato, né, é, é um canal onde as pessoas estão conseguindo solucionar problemas, tirar as dúvidas, conseguir chegar onde elas precisam chegar. 
So I, I think if I will not have much of your time, I will leave this channel open for you to say something else if you want about the project, about the Kirigami, uh, or something else that you would like to say for uh, the subscribers of this channel. Okay. Um, well, one thing I can, I want to uh, thank you for the invite. It has been uh, really awesome. And uh, um, I have to say that in, um, uh, in uh, all those years, um, the uh, Brazilian community of, uh, of uh, contributors to the uh, KD project has always been uh, uh, really top notch, really very good people, and keep them sending, <laughs> keep, keep sending them. Thank you a lot. It's very important for people to know that. Primeiramente agradecer o convite, né? Eu que agradeço por estar aqui. Obrigado, é um prazer conhecê-lo. Igualmente. E fica uh, o convite para as pessoas que não conhecem a comunidade de KDE, fazer parte do KDE. Uh, tem o um canal do Telegram, tem o um canal do IRC, tem lista de e-mail. E uh, a comunidade é extremamente acessível, uh, principalmente para pessoas que querem começar a ser contribuidores, querem começar a programar. E não necessariamente a pessoa tem que ter um, um know-how, um conhecimento muito grande sobre as tecnologias, porque ela também serve como um caminho de entrada para pessoas que estão na universidade, ou as pessoas que querem aprender a programar, por causa que é, dentro da comunidade existe muitas pessoas que têm uma expertise, ou têm um conhecimento muito grande, que acabam te ajudando a, a te ajudar a aprender e descobrir o que você pode melhorar é, para si mesmo, que foi o meu caso que é, eu comecei utilizando o Google Summer of Code, com a ajuda do Tomás, na época. Quem não sabe, é um projeto que ajuda, incentiva universitários a participarem de projetos open source. E desde ele, né, já faz alguns anos, eu continuo sendo um contribuidor do, do KDE, mandando alguns, algumas correções, alguns patches, e contribuindo para alguns projetos. E fica a dica para pessoas que, 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 que querem fazer parte da comunidade, Uh, existem várias vantagens e principalmente o conhecimento e o aprendizado que ela traz, que é, eu acho, acredito que seja o uh, maior bagagem que a comunidade pode ajudar as pessoas, é com o conhecimento e com as ferramentas que disponibilizam a partir dele para todo mundo. E além disso, fica o convite também para quem tiver uma impressora 3D ou uma CNC de testar e ajudar com o um projeto a ateliê. E obrigado pelo convite. É isso, eu que agradeço. Obrigadão. Fica aí, galera, também o um convite para participar do projeto Ateliê. O projeto Brazuca está crescendo cada vez mais. Tomás? Bom, eu, eu estou aqui. É, é mais ou menos isso que o Patrick falou, né? É, puxei ele para cá, eu também puxei muita gente do Brasil para o projeto KD. E eu estou sempre enchendo o saco nos canais que eu participo, avisando que quem quiser programar, eu ajudo. De todas as pessoas que eu perguntei e puxei para ver quem quiser aprender a programar, eu ajudo, apareceram duas pessoas, mas já desapareceram também, então venham programar. A gente precisa. Software gratuito, software livre é feito por desenvolvedores. Ter muito usuário é ótimo, mas se você tem um ou dois desenvolvedores no projeto, o projeto vai morrer. E a gente sempre precisa de mais programadores. Pô, bacana, recado dado. É, galera, espero que vocês tenham gostado do vídeo. Uh, I will say thank you for you guys who came here and say those words for our uh, crew. Uh, and I hope this helps you to uh, grow with this Kirigami project, Atelier project, and to have more people uh, developing for KDE, for the Plasma Desktop, because I think that for me, this is the most promising technology for today. I'm, I'm a big fan, big fan of KDE project, the Plasma Desktop, and all the efforts for uh, the mobile platform, the conversion applications. I think we will see a lot more in the next few years. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks for us. It has been awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>